Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Global Judicial Integrity Network podcast series with Chief Justice Watanapan of the Supreme Court of Thailand. Oh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are here to talk about Thailand's specialized anti-corruption court. Um, but could you first please tell us uh, briefly about your professional background? All right. I, I started my career as a judge in the court of first instance. Mm -hmm. I worked in the court of first instance for almost uh, 20 years. For uh, the first 10 years, after 10 years, I, I got prom promoted to be a chief judge in the court of first instance. Mm -hmm. uh, I was appointed as the chief judge in Phuket Provincial Court and uh, there I moved around uh, some provinces and after that uh, I have been transferred back to Bangkok mm -hmm. and got promoted to be uh, a, a judge in the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. in, in Thailand we, we have a three court level, the Court of mm -hmm. First Assistant, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Court of Appeal, we divided into 10 uh, as Court of Appeal region. It's one of my, uh, I supervise. And, and after that, I was appointed as the a judge in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And eventually I moved to, to be the a executive of the court. Um, so Speaking of the specialized anti-corruption court that Thailand created uh, in 2016, could you tell us um, what the impetus was for forming the anti-corruption court? There, w there was public outcry about mm -hmm. the malpractice and corruption among the officers and politicians. And uh, after the change of the new constitution, institution at that time, uh, uh, the people, the general people want some kind of special court to manage or er eradicate this kind of cor corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, the, uh, the government at that time declared the policy responding to such a public outcry. Mm -hmm. And I, I can remember that uh, one of the 11 agenda of the national reform plan uh, is clearly uh, to eradicate corruption in the country in 20 years. That, oh, wow. that the, the, the uh, commitment that uh, the government at that time mm -hmm. did it and to achieve this, the act on establishment of the criminal court and corrupt, for corruption and misconduct cases uh, was enacted. And uh, the specialized court for corruption and misconduct cases was subsequently established in that year, uh, 2016. And the purpose of that court is to expand the rich a prosecution of corruption offenses mm -hmm. to the private sector, a lower level of the government officer mm. to resolve corruption case with uh, more quickly in, uh, than uh, cases in ordinary court. Mm -hmm. And uh, a year later, the regional specialized criminal court for corruption and misconduct have also been established. Now we have the 10 uh, criminal court for corruption and misconduct cases around the country. Ah, okay, so it isn't just one court, it's, it's a series of regional courts. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, you, may, you may think that uh, we, we just established this kind of court. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. in 
1997, mm -hmm. uh, the all, uh, there all uh, there was also the public outcry outcry that the politician have uh, misconduct mm -hmm. and malfeasance in their duty, and uh, the legislature at that time uh, proposed the new law mm -hmm. establishing. Uh, the uh, division, anti-corruption anti division mm -hmm. in the Supreme Court. Okay. It's amazing that they established uh, the court, uh, the new court, to try the criminal cases in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, the people in, 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 in the ju judiciary, uh, at the very beginning, we disagree with them because mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to me that the court should start at the court of first instance. Oh, interesting. And then uh, uh, appeal to the high court or mm -hmm. the Supreme Court, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the public, the people want mm -hmm. the, uh, the court that can eradicate corruption fastly sure. and seriously. So finally, the legislature passed the law, uh, provided, authorized the court of, uh, so the Supreme Court with this kind of author authority to uh, uh, try the criminal case. But mm -hmm. it limited only to politicians. Ah, okay. Uh, so we start at that point in 1997 and it worked quite well mm -hmm. because uh, some minist ministry, mm -hmm. mi some minister, and also the ex prime minister mm. uh, were, tried in, were tried in this court. And uh, two ex prime minister were mm -hmm. uh, sentenced to okay. jail. And uh, do you think then public trust in the judiciary became stronger? Yes, I think mm -hmm. I I think we we have a, uh, we had a good response mm -hmm. from the public, uh, but uh, people still think that uh, any anyway that that there is the, some disadvantage of the this kind of innovation in the Supreme Court mm -hmm. because the challenge the right of the defendant. Mm -hmm. How come you have, mm. you didn't provide them the right to appeal? Yes, I see. Because okay. you first uh, start the case the in the instance. Supreme Court, right? Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, the Supreme Court responds to such a uh, criticism by establish the appeal department mm. in the Supreme Court. Okay, that makes sense. What, what we did, uh, we uh, hold the plenary session in the Supreme Court. It means all the justices mm -mm. Uh, sit together, meet together, and select and elect the nine justices mm. for anti-corruption. Okay. And it worked, and it worked. And, and the public say, that's okay. You provide the right for the defendant according to the principle of rule of law. Mm -hmm. And it's worked until now. Uh, unfortunately, that system uh, uh, created only for politician mm -hmm. and the accomplice, uh, mm. uh, the officer, the high-ranking uh, officer. Therefore, uh, to solve this problem, they established the uh, the new court in 2016 mm. as the court was just saying. Mm -hmm. The Court of Appeal for, for Anti-Corruption, as well as the, the Anti-Corruption Court itself. Right. Right. Um, so after they're nominated, are there any additional qualifications or any additional training that these judges uh, receive so that they can work on mm -hmm. anti-corruption cases? The, the basic qualification of the judges in this court, uh, they must have a long experience of uh, trying the mm -hmm. cases especially the criminal case, mm -hmm. at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 
when they are appointed as the judge, uh, the judge in this court, they have to get the special training mm. uh, because uh, this specialized court for uh, uh, corruption and misconduct case design, uh, design and work, uh, design the process differently from ordinary, ordinary court. Mm -hmm. For the ordinary court, we use the accusatorial system. Mm -hmm. It means that both parties have their duty to provide evidence. The court, the judges sit uh, passively, listen to the evidence mm -hmm. provided mm -hmm. by each uh, party, and then weigh the, the, the evidence mm -hmm. and, uh, and decide it and decide the case, mm -hmm. right? But for the uh, specialized court for corruption and misconduct cases, uh, the judges need to do a uh, proactive role mm -hmm. to, uh, to be the fact finder uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to explore every evidence. They can, they are authorized to uh, uh, request any evidence from any organization which mm -hmm. they think it's concerning the issue, the particular issue in the cases. And, and uh, this, the uh, proactive role which uh, we have to uh, adjust uh, mm. or train mm -hmm. our, our judges to do this kind of job. Um, do you think that this court has changed the way that Thailand is combating corruption? Uh, it seems to me that uh, now the public satisfy with the mm -hmm. existing of this kind of court. Mm -hmm. It seemed to them that uh, the court could have uh, done their job within the uh, uh, the right time. I think the uh, because of the the design of of the process in trying the the court work very well. And the other thing, it uh, sent the signal to the public as well as the officer that uh, you cannot do whatever you like to do as the way it was anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there are many eyes look mm -hmm. at you mm -hmm. and we have the uh, capable organization to manage these kind of cases mm -hmm. rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so far there are only about 20 member states that have these kind of specialized anti-corruption courts but there are a lot of states that have serious corruption issues. What advice would you give to a country that was considering creating an anti-corruption court? Uh, I think first of all, in each particular uh, country, each particular state have to evaluate the environment in which their court perform. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to think about how the public uh, respond, how the public want the court to do. Because uh, in order to establish this kind of court, the success need the participation, citizen participation mm -hmm. and support very mm -hmm. much. And, and then you educate the public. You educate mm -hmm. the, the uh, judicial staff. If you are ready, it's, uh, it's about time to kick off. Mm. And uh, you have to realize that in order to uh, make this kind of court efficiently, you cannot work uh, as the traditional court you used to be mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to be passive. You have to be uh, fast. Mm -hmm. And you have to evaluate the, uh, the, uh, the court procedure. You have to introduce more technology in order to mm -hmm. uh, find the fact. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to consider that the court must be the efficient, efficient 
in fighting the fact. And uh, again, I thanks the UNODC and the Qatar government very much. Thank you so much uh, to you as well for agreeing to participate in the interview. And for everyone listening, stay tuned for further episodes of the Global Judicial Integrity Network podcast series.